Hi all. Today let's see how we can handle errors that happen while making use of RSJS observables. So before we go into see how we can handle the errors in observables, let us see how an error can happen in a normal Angular application. So here I have an Angular 13 application and within this application I have the app component within whose template I am making use of the app child. So here in this app child, what happened is that I created a form group and I forgot to initialize this variable. And then I went ahead and tried to call set value in order to set an initial value for this form. So now what happens when I run this application is that I will receive an error like it is saying I cannot read the property undefined and we are trying to call the set value of this undefined. So this is the normal way in which an error occurs. And if we click on this core.mjs, you can see that actually this message is getting logged here. Console.error along with the error value that is the stack trace. So how did the code execution reach here? So let's put a breakpoint here. When I refresh the application, you can see that actually the control came here. Now here in the call stack, we will be able to see how that control reached. So this is the current layer in the call stack. If you go one layer down, you can see that it is being called within this handler method. We can go one more layer down. And here if you see, Actually, why that error got logged here is because there is a try-catch block that is being written within the Angular, which will take care of this particular error. So whenever an error happens within an Angular application, immediately the catch block will be executed and it will log this message. Now, similarly, we will also be able to handle errors within our components as well. So let's see how we can do that. So we can go to our component and we can wrap this code within a try catch block. So one thing to note is that immediately when an error happens, so the first line was setting the value and after that I am trying to display the value child here. So basically it will be like child works. You, but you can see that once the error happens within this line, immediately the execution is stopped and the message is logged. So once we add a try catch block, we can do our own handling. So the control will remain within our component itself and the application will not break. So now once I have moved the code to within this try catch block, what has happened is that instead of mess logging the actual message from the Angular framework, here we are logging our message that is console.log error. But still you can see that the child works is still not visible. That is because this error is actually within this try block. So in case we move it outside, you can see that the child works message is displayed. This is because the error happens within this try catch block that is caught here and we are logging a console and after that our program will continue execution normally. So as a result the title property is set and we will be able to see the corresponding binding in the HTML. So now let's see how errors can happen with an observable. So here in the child component Actually, what I am doing is I am calling a get data method within a shared service. So here, if you go, basically I am making an HTTP call to the URL the slash test. And here, what happened is that actually this URL is not existing. So here, once I call that and subscribe to that observable, the API call will be made. And since that particular API is non-existing, it will throw an error. So now let's see that. So here, once the app is refreshed, you can see that the normal error, that is the 
nuller route that happened earlier that is getting caught and since we have not put the observable within the try catch block it is actually failing so the angler is displaying the message as previously now let's see what happens when we move this block to within the try catch so here i am moving the observable within the try catch block so once we refresh the application you can see that even when we add the observable code within the try catch block the error is still not getting caught by this try catch block so this is a limitation of the try catch block because it it can handle errors only which happen in a synchronous code since our observable is an async operation those kind of errors cannot be handled by making use of a try catch block so how can we handle these errors that can occur within an observable so the basic or the simplest way is that the subscribe block has a extended format where we will be able to provide an object so here the initial thing which we give that is actually an observer that will be executed when a next or a new value is emitted from the observable similarly there is a key called error where we will be able to give the error message so in case any errors occur within this observable the error block will be executed and the control will be stopped here so let's see that now you can see that actually the control is coming to our console.log that is the error block and it is getting logged here and once it is logged actually the control doesn't go to the top level that is the angular error handler and we will be able to prevent any breaking within our application flow the error block which we saw currently it can be used for handling very simple cases of error but suppose the data which is being received from this api we are making use within our application so here i have created a property called data and i am assigning whatever value that comes from the api to this field i am binding it to the ui so now what happens is that since our observable has actually failed there won't be any data here so such scenario cannot be handled by making use of the error block within the subscribe so for that what we can do is that we have the pipe operator where we can give multiple operators and one such operator is the catch error so using the catch error what we will be able to do is that we will be able to catch the error that occurred within the observable and we can prevent it from reaching to the subscribers so here what i have done is i have made use of the catch error block and here whenever an error occurs i am returning a default value that is default data so off is basically it will return an observable and the type of that observable is string so now what will happen is when an error occurs within this observable immediately the control will come here and instead of throwing an error it will return this default data and since when we subscribe the subscriber will see that there was no error in this part and it will come to the next block so as expected the default value will be assigned to this data property and the console that is the error block won't be executed now let's see this in action so here you can see that initially the default data that is this log was executed that is because the catch error caught the exception and instead of throwing the error it assigned the default value and that value we are passing it to the next so here we are logging the data that is what we are seeing here and once we assign the particular data to the property we will be able to see that within our binding so let's explore the catch error block a bit more so here i am commenting out the synchronous error so that we can get a clearer log messages so here we had given a single 
catch error. So instead of that, we can have multiple catch error operators. So here what I am doing is within the first catch error, I am actually throwing the error one more time. So here we will be able to get hold of the error and by making use of the throw error operator, what we can do is we can throw a new error. So here I am giving the error message whatever we are receiving from the initial error itself. So now what will happen is that since we are rethrowing the error, the next catch error will get hold of this error. So once the catch error block gets hold of the error, it will return a string called HTTP called failed. And since the second catch error is handling the error, it won't reach to the error block. So now let's run the application. So here you can see that we are initially rethrowing the error. That is this console. Then we are catching the error in the second block. That is caught rethrown error. And here we will be able to see the error which we throw from the first catch block. And after that, the next block is executed instead of the error. So suppose we didn't give this catch error, that's the second block. What would have happened is that the error would have reached the error block and the value would not have been bound here. So here you can see that it actually reached the outer block. In the case of a synchronous try catch block, we have a block called finally. So let's enable the error one more time and here we can actually give a block called finally where we will be able to do some actions so the use of finally is that this block will be always executed that is even if there is no error within the try block or in case there is an error in either case the finally block will always be executed so if you go now you can see that the synchronous error is thrown but even then the finally block is executed. Similarly in case we had commented this out even then you can see that the finally block is getting executed. So similarly we have something called the finalized block that is available within the asynchronous handling. So this is for the synchronous operation Similarly, we have the operator finalize which can be used for a similar functionality to the finally. So here I have added a finalize operator and within that I am logging the async block. So now when we execute the code, you can see that once all the error that has been captured and the value has been emitted, the async final block has been executed. So till now what we are seeing, actually we subscribe to the observable within our component.ts and this particular scenario we were trying to handle the error. So similarly let's see what will happen in case we make use of an async pipe for binding. So since in our scenario we are actually binding the value to the template, we can make use of the async pipe. So here I will create an observable data dollar and I'm going to comment out the data so this data dollar property I will be assigning here and I am going to comment out the subscribe block so now ideally I am just assigning this observable, whatever is coming from this pipe, I am assigning it directly to the data dollar and here I will be binding that using an async pipe. So now let's see what happens. So you can see that it is working exactly as previously it was working and there is not any difference. So there can be scenarios in which you might need to retry the HTTP code. So in case an error happens, we might need to retry it a certain number of times. So for that, we have the operator retry. 
so you will be able to give the count so in case you need to retry it a couple more times once the error occurs we can just give the retry to so one thing to note is that you need to give the retry before the catcher so here when we run our application you can see that the actual api call is repeated two more times but since our api does not exist it just fails with a 404 so you can see that the retry happens quite quickly so in case you need to add a delay for this retry you can uh, give a different configuration so it accepts a key called count where you will be able to give the number of trade tries and delay where you can give the the delay in which the retrace needs to be executed so let's refresh our application so here you can see that it is getting retried after every two seconds and once all the retry is completed the value within our observable which we are passing here it is getting displayed through the async pipe so previously we had another operator called retry when so here you will be actually able to pass an observable and you will be able to perform some additional logic within the retry when but the problem with the retry when operator is that it is deprecated and it will be soon removed from the rsjs library so we can make use of the retry instead of the retry when hope you are able to get a good idea about how we can handle the errors that can occur within rsjs observables see you soon thank you